everybody, it's Jocelyn here. Um, Madison, our director of parish programs, is holding the camera. And uh, we're going to be doing a little summer teaching series called Teach Us to Pray. Um, here we're quoting the disciples who had been hanging out with Jesus. And they see that something that he does a lot is he goes off usually outside to pray. And the disciples want to know, teach us, Jesus, how to pray. So we're going to have probably seven or eight different videos to go through briefly some different ways of praying. Now there are as many ways of praying as there are human beings. Each of us talks to God in our own particular way. Um, but it can do us some good from time to time to be intentional about how is it that we talk to God and listen to God. Um, we are a prayer book people. Common Prayer is really important to us as Episcopalians, and we're going to talk about the Book of Common Prayer um, in a future session. The way that I define prayer is that it's the conscious raising of my heart and my mind into the presence of God. And I use the word conscious because for me that's really important that it, there's time set aside that's not just my daily life. Now some people will say that prayer is their life. Their life is a prayer. I think that is very beautiful and it reminds me of what Paul says in Thessalonians when he says pray, pray without ceasing. So all of our life in a sense is a response to God's gift of grace, to the gift of life. But what we're gonna be focusing on is this conscious conversation and listening between us and God. So our, for our first Teach Us to Pray um, episode, we're going to talk about centering prayer. Centering prayer is a, an ancient prayer practice that focuses more on the listening, the receptive aspect of prayer, rather than the speaking to God part of prayer. Um, we actually have on our website, which you'll see in a little bit, a lot of resources about centering prayer. Um, including a seven-day program if you're willing to spend 10 minutes twice a day um, and just be guided through it. We've got some parishioners who really love Centering Prayer and it is one of their primary prayer languages. I love Centering Prayer. I, I do it, um, I wouldn't say every day, which is definitely what's recommended, but enough, I've done it enough over the years that I'm comfortable teaching about it. The way that I do Centering Prayer, it's the same time every day, early in the morning. Uh, I have a particular place where I sit and I set my timer usually for 10 minutes. Some people will do 20, some people will do less than that. The amount of time I don't think matters as much as the intention. So I set my timer so that I'm not distracted about time. And then I also, um, I set an intention to simply keep returning to God throughout this 10 minute period. And the way that I do that in Centering Prayer, it's recommended is that we have a prayer word. My prayer word is Shalom. I don't know where I got that from. It was just a gift of the Holy Spirit, but it kind of sounds like the word for peace in Hebrew. So um, I sit quietly and I say the word Shalom, often sort of in accord with my breath. And sometimes I'll get still enough that the word just kind of, kind of fades. Um, and inevitably a thought will arise for me. Often it's like something that I need to do. And so instead of indulging that thought, what I do is I just say the word Shalom again. And then I remember my intention to surrender and come back to the center, come back to God. So that's what it is for about 10 minutes. And then when my little alarm goes off, I usually close with the Lord's Prayer and I get up slowly and continue on with my day. That's Centering Prayer in a nutshell. Um, a lot of folks get intimidated by the period of silence. Um, I think, I understand that, and I think it's a real gift because the silence sometimes reveals to us what's going on a layer or two below our normal busy mind stuff. Um, so with, with the thoughts that will keep pummeling some of you, just remember those are just invitations to keep coming back. Or if your body needs to move around because it's uncomfortable, go ahead and move your body. Um, and, and then just go back to that centering prayer word or to that intention to return to God. Um, some people don't, don't care for centering prayer because they feel like nothing is happening. And that's where I think it really invites us to lean on faith and to trust that on a spiritual level, uh, God is nurturing and healing us within and by us consciously 
uh, intending to return to God, we're allowing that relationship and that healing to go a little bit deeper. I look forward to other series with you. Thanks so much. Enjoy your prayer.